Okay, so uh, we're together for the next 20 minutes. Uh, we'll have a small uh, question and answer at the end. So basically, I'm going to be talking about the next 15 minutes about quick introduction and then uh, how the fire pilot job evolved from the 2000s to 2030s. And then we'll talk a bit about the cliff effect. Because today we've been presented a lot of very, very nice tech. Uh, but as fire pilots, we are always concerned about when it goes wrong, and we call it the cliff effect. So we'll have a, a quick chat about that as well. That used to be my home uh, during nine years. I uh, flew Rafale from the aircraft carrier, and it's a pretty old picture. And you can tell because you have a mix of Rafale that have been around for about 20 years almost now, and Super Etendard. The Super Etendard is a legacy aircraft that we use in the French Navy. I've got more than 800 hours flying the Super Etendard. And uh, we'll talk about the differences in a minute, because understanding the differences between those two generations of aircraft will help you understand how stuff are going to move forward. That shot from the French aircraft carrier, uh, we take about 5Gs. That's uh, GoPro footage from inside the Rafale. It's a wide-angle wide view, uh, so basically stuff are closer than they appear. That's what we call a merge. The so closing speed between the two aircraft is about Mach 1.8. And that's regular low-level training flights. So any guess on the altitude right now? Uh, it wouldn't be legal. I, I couldn't show it. Uh, so 100 feet. Uh, we're allowed to fly 100 feet, 500 knots for training. And uh, that's some footage for those of you that know uh, Djibouti. Uh, we flew and we flew above La Cassal, which is below sea level. So this jet is about 200 feet below mid sea level right now. Okay, as you can see, we're using a small stick, and give you an idea, you see the stick movements are very, very small, and um, keep that in mind, because I'll show you some footage of the Super Etendard after. The Rafale is fly-by-wire. Basically, it's like a, the Airbus of, of fighter jets. That's a takeoff from the aircraft carrier. Uh, we would take off sometime with the afterburner on, sometime not, and that's when we come back home. We have to, because that's where the food is, and we have to eat. So we have up to three attempts, usually, to land on the boat. If we don't make it in those three attempts, we'll either have to um, go to an alternate airfield or um, refuel and try again. Okay. That's a super Uh As you can see, the design is very different, and the cockpit as well. I'll show you the cockpit in a minute. As you can see on the Rafale, you've got the three big screens and the head-up display. So right now, we're not using um, Add up displays in the, head, in the headset, so what you saw from Telus earlier, uh, we do not have it in the Rafale. It's a technology that, that exists, but we, we just don't have it right now in, in the French Navy. On a boat at night, as you can see, we have uh, touch screens on the side, two touch screens here, a big touch screen in the middle as well. So a lot of touch screens, which is good when the screens work. Okay, uh, so, different cockpit. I've got four and a half years experience in this. As you can see, very big stick very different, uh, not as big. The big difference between the two generations is mostly uh, with all the system inside. Uh, when we're above Iraq, we fly the same speed. If it's a Rafale or if it's a Super Atlanta, basically what we do is we fly between 300 and 360 knots. That's it. We don't have to fly Mach 2, we don't have to fly Mach 1.5. That's not what we do right now in combat situations. Right now what we do is mostly air-to-ground missions or Iraq or in, um, in Africa, and the aircraft usually fly at those low speeds. So the Super Atlanta was, was well designed to do that as well. But, as you might imagine, the cockpit interface was very different. So basically, it would limit the pilot in his ability to perform stuff and get what we call situation awareness. Basically, as we've seen all night today, the more screens you add, the more information you give the pilot, the better situation, the situation awareness is. <coughs> It's understanding of your surroundings. <coughs> when you're flying an aircraft like that, do you know how you get situation awareness? By looking outside. You would spend, nine, I'm not kidding, 99% of your flight looking outside in an aircraft like that. In a Rafale, it's just not possible. Coming from the Super Etanda, I was like a typical cocky guy that, oh, I used to look outside 99% of the time, I'll continue to do that, switching on the Rafale. It's not possible. You can't. You have to press the buttons, you have to do stuff, and the war moves further away from you because now your all your systems are able to shoot further. So you really have to spend more time inside the cockpit. That's why the cockpit changes also. 